friends. I'm Miss Kelly, your friend from the Storytime Express at the Carroll County Public Library's Outreach Department. So nice to welcome you all back here to my home again for another fun story time. We are going to be doing so many fun things together today and my friend Corky is so excited to get to see you again. Let's see if we can find out where he went. Let's call him. Ready? One, two, three. Corky! I think I see him down here. Come on, Corky. My friends want to see you. Come on up here. Woo! Oh, boy, it's good to be back. Hi, friends. I'm Corky the Fox. Corky the Fox? Wait a minute. You're not a fox. Well, I know. Of course I'm not. <laughs> but I like to pretend. Oh, that's fun. Pretending is fun. Do you guys like to pretend sometimes? You can dress up. You can wear a mask like Corky. Or you could just imagine that you are something other than what you are. It can be a really fun and safe way to try out new things. And there's some fun ideas about making masks like Corky has here if you visit our Pinterest page. Did you know the Outreach Department had a Pinterest page? You can find it by searching library ccpl backslash outreach and you'll find lots of boards there with ideas and one of them is all about forest animals. Well I thought we were going to talk about forest animals today. That's right Corky, you, you're right. And so that's why you dressed up like a fox. Mm-hmm. Good job. Well, I'm going to scoot that back so we can see your face. Okay. Now, hmm, what's the first thing we always do in story time, Corky? We sing our hello song. Of course we sing it. Maybe you friends have learned it and you could sing along with us. Come on. Hi, friends. It's time to get together. Hi friends, come and sing a song with me. Hi friends, it's time to share some laughter. Hi friends, come and smile a while with me. Oh, nice job, Corky. You always do a good job on that song. And I thought I heard a few of you out there singing along. Good job. Now, you know, Corky, we mentioned forest friends. Hmm. forest. My husband and I live in a log house in the woods. Hmm, do any of you live in the forest? I hear some say yes and some say no. There are lots of different places that we can have our homes. You could live in an apartment building, or you could live in the city, or you could live on a farm. So many different places to live, and I like to live here among the trees in the woods. What about you? Do penguins live in the forest? Oh, no, don't be silly, Miss Kelly. I'm just here for a visit. <laughs> well, that's right. So let's see. What should we do next? Hmm. Maybe we should find out what other animals live in the forest, Corky. Oh, yeah, I'd like to know. Hmm. I wonder, wonder, wonder who. Well, I have a a poem to share about forest animals. Would you like to hear it? Oh, I would. You guys ready? Okay, I'm gonna go take a rest while you share it with the friends. Okay, Corky. See you later, friends. Woohoo! Oh boy, Corky's such a fun friend to have around, isn't he? Well, I wrote a little poem about forest friends and I'm gonna share it with you in just a second. But first I wanted to show you Sometimes when we do poems, we like to use our fingers, use our hands to do motions to go along with it. We, sometimes we call that a finger play. And we can have a lot of fun when we combine that movement and the words. That helps our brains make connections even better. And one way to do that is with finger puppets. And I have this little finger puppet theater that came from a store that looks like a tree trunk, doesn't it? It has a little door in the back that you can open. It has holes. You want to count them with me? One, two, three. And it has little finger puppet friends that live inside and you can move them around. You can pull them in and peek them out. 
and that's fun to have, but if you don't have a fancy one like that that came from a store, you can make your very own finger puppet theater. And I want to show you a couple that I made. It was so fun to be creative. This first one is really simple. I just took a piece of poster board, and if you peek on the inside, you can see that white paper inside. I cut some holes, one, two, three, four, five in this theater, and then I cut a space in the back to put my hand in, and now if I had those puppets on my fingers, I could stick them out of the holes and play, tell a story, do a rhyme, sing a song. So that's really fun. And then I made another theater over here. This one I made using a box. And it's very easy to make. If you have a box, and I bet a lot of us have boxes at our houses right now because we've been getting a lot of things delivered through the mail, this is simply a cardboard box. I cut a hole in the front, and I cut a hole in the back, and now I can stick my hand inside and do a little rhyme for you. So, we're going to do that together. I just need to get my paper with my words. The poem is called Deep in the Forest. And I am going to use three finger puppets that I made homemade. And you can make finger puppets easily um, just by cutting pictures out of magazines or printing them off the computer, or you could make them cut them from your coloring books and draw them yourself. So I'm going to set this puppet theater on my lap and do my poem. Deep in the forest, what did I see? <gasps> I saw a big hole in the trunk of a tree. I watched and I waited to see what I could see. I wondered which animals would come to visit me. In the forest, what did I see? A sleepy black bear peeking out at me. He stretched and he yawned. Oh, and he blinked his eyes. Then he let out a roar to my surprise. Can you roar like a bear? Roar! <laughs> Good job. Let's take him away. Let's see who's going to come out next. Hmm. Deep. In the forest, what did I see? A frisky little squirrel peeking out at me. She gathered up some acorns for a tasty dish. Then she scurried all around and gave her tail a swish. Can you swish your tails? <laughs> Good job. Let's do one more. Forest, what did I see? <gasps> a handsome buck looking out at me. He flashed his antlers and looked at me. Then he gave a snort and went behind the tree. Snort. <laughs> Deep in the forest, what will you see? Sit very quietly and watch that tree. If you are very patient and you don't make a sound, the animals will all come out and dance around. Woohoo! Let's dance like the animals. Good job, friends. Oh, that was fun. All right, let me put my theater away over here. So maybe you want to think about making your very own finger puppet theater. You could make one like the ones I made, or maybe you could think of a new creative way to do it. If you would like some ideas about how to do that, then you need to stay tuned because very soon I'm going to be putting a couple of short little how-to videos up on our YouTube channel. Did you know the library had a YouTube channel? That's right, we do. So you can find that if you search library, CCPL, kids and families. And you'll find our channel there. You'll find some story time videos and you'll also find these little how-to videos so you can make some theaters of your very own. Well, I wanted to show you a book that I've loved for a long time. Really, it's been around a very long time and I've loved it since I was a little girl. It's a tall book, just tall like a tree, isn't it? 
and the title of our book is A Tree is Nice. And you can see there's a tall tree stretching up right on the front cover and, if, and this little tiny sapling or baby tree here that a little girl is taking care of. If we open up across the spine and look at the back cover, we can see even more trees growing here. So this book, one of the reasons I love it, it talks about all the things that I love about the trees and why I love living in the forest. I'm going to share just a couple pages with you. Trees are very nice. They fill up the sky. And if you look very closely, you might be able to see down here, there's a little boy who's laying on his back and looking up at the forest canopy, the tops of the trees. And that's really one of my favorite things to do in my woods, in my yard. I like to go out in our hammock and look up at the tree leaves. They're so beautiful. And a lot of the trees are getting their leaves nice and green and fresh. Trees make the woods. They make everything beautiful. And look at that. There you can see, looking down from above, you can see the forest canopy with the bright sun shining in the sky. Let's look at one more page. This might be a reason why you love trees. An apple tree, we can climb to pick the apples. And look at all these friends up in the apple tree. They're gathering apples and putting them in the baskets. That's something I did a lot when I was a little girl because my next door neighbor had apple trees in her yard and all the neighborhood children would climb up in those trees and gather apples and play games and pretend we had a whole city up in the treetops. Yeah, that can be lots of fun. So that's a book I enjoy about trees. Now, hmm, what should we do next? You know, I think it might be fun to go out into the woods around my home and search for signs of the animals who live there. But I can't go without Corky. Let me see. Corky, are you ready to go searching for animal signs? Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Can I come? Oh, I really, really, really want to come. Well, of course you can come, Corky. And let's tell our friends, if you're getting ready to go out and be a nature explorer, there are some things you might want to take along with you. I have a basket here to carry with me. Oh, look at all that cool stuff. Hey, hey, Miss Kelly. What, Corky? My field glasses. I used them when we were looking for backyard birds. That's right, you did. They help us to look far away at things that are very small and make them seem closer. You also might want to bring one of these because we use it like a camera, don't we? And you could take pictures of the things that you see, just like Corky and I are going to do. What else? What else? What else? Well, maybe you'd like a basket or a bag that you could ha carry with by the handle, and you could gather things like leaves or sticks or pine cones or stones that you find. Hmm, that might be fun. Yeah, I like to look for things in the woods. And I have this book that helps me identify the trees in my backyard. So I think I'm all set. Are you all set, Corky? Oh, yeah. I'm ready. Are you ready, friends? Let's go explore the animals in Miss Kelly's forest. Come on. Okay, friends. Let's go. Let's be nature explorers. We're going to walk down here to the east branch of the Patapsco River, which runs along the back, back edge of my property. And you can see what a beautiful spot it is. And it's a great place to come to look for animal signs because many animals depend on the water in the river to drink, to wash, and to find their food. So the first sign of animals that I found when I walked down here is actually a pile of scat. And do you know what scat is? It's poop. Ew! But everybody poops. And this is actually raccoon scat. And you can see the raccoon's been fishing and catching crayfish and then coming up onto the rock to eat his crayfish meal. And after he goes to the potty, 
after he eats his food, he goes to the potty right on the rock. And then time goes by and it dries out and it gets rained on and gradually all the sticky, yucky, ooey, stinky part washes away. And here in this next picture, you can see all that's left are the little pieces of shell from where the raccoon has eaten those crayfish and left behind tiny bits of shell. And just a little further over on the riverbank, in the mud, I spy raccoon tracks. Can you see his sharp pointy little claws in the mud at the end of each toe? Yeah, that's the raccoon track. Then let's walk up away from the riverbank a little bit and, and we will see at the top of that large stone area is a burrow that goes back under the edge of the rock deep into the hillside. I think that's somebody's burrow. I'm not sure if that's where the raccoon takes his rest or if another animal might have found shelter under there, but you can bet that's the burrow. It's a home of an animal. A little further along the path, we come to a tree. Look how strange this tree bark looks. There's a large area where all the bark is gone. Can you imagine? I wonder who did that to the tree? Well, that is beaver damage. A beaver came up out of the river and chewed on that bark of that tree because that's what beavers eat. They eat tree bark. And you can see where over time the beaver didn't eat all the way through and make the tree fall down, but he did eat a large area of the bark and gradually that healed and, and now the tree is still growing strong, but it's got a, a some beaver damage. And then in this other tree, you can see a little fresher sign of beaver. This beaver's been here a little more recently and you can see the color is a little different where he's eaten that bark off. It hasn't healed and dried over yet. Down below that, in the mud of the riverbank, there are lots of tracks. Here's a very clear two-toed track that is from a deer, you're right, that's a deer track. The deer have hooves that look make a mark like two toes. And here's another example. Next to a fallen log, there are two more deer tracks. A little further along the bank, I found a mixture of tracks here, including my neighbor's dogs and um, some more raccoon tracks mixed in. These next ones are really deep down in the soft mud and I'm not sure what they are. I'm gonna call those the mystery tracks. They're unknown and maybe I can get an identification from someone else. I'm not sure who made those footprints. And as we walk along a little higher up away from the river, I see an old tree. Now this is actually a dead tree, but it's still standing up. And look at all the marks in the trunk of this tree. Can you guess what animal has been pecking those holes in the tree? Let me give you a hint. Rat-a-tat-tat-tat-tat-tat. Rat-a-tat-tat-tat-tat-tat. That's right, the woodpecker. The woodpecker's been here especially the pileated woodpecker. And when we talked about backyard birds, you got to hear the sound of the pileated woodpecker. But that shows you how they dig, dig, dig in those tree trunks trying to get insects. Here's another example with a deeper hole in the center where some bird has made a nest in the old hollow tree. Now, this is really interesting to me as my husband and I were walking along searching for animal signs, we found this. A huge tree fell down in the woods and the roots were pulled up out of the ground and there's my husband standing next to the giant root ball from that tree. Isn't that amazing? And all kinds of creatures, worms and insects and all kinds of things burrow around and get, the, get into that dirt underneath the tree trunk there. Can you see this, my friends? Long time ago, a tree fell in the woods. 
And it fell across the river. And there's the trunk lying down in the river. And look, it goes all the way to the other side. And then the branches go up the side of the cliff. Isn't that amazing? And bit by bit, it will decompose or rot. And then it will turn to soil and fall back in the stream and be washed away. Oh my. Then back up a little closer to my house, up at the top of the hill where I live, you can look out and see a squirrel's nest. Well, my friends, we've been looking for signs of animals in the woods around my house. And if you take a little peek with me up, up, up the tree trunk, you'll see something way up high. And if we zoom in, can you see that clump of leaves and sticks? That is a squirrel's nest. And all day long I can watch the squirrels picking up bunches of leaves in their mouth and scampering up and down the tree trunk, making a nice soft nest for their squirrel babies. And look who's posing on my front porch. There's one of my squirrels. There are so many squirrels in my yard. They're everywhere. And this one stopped to take a little rest on my front porch and I got a nice close up shot for you. Look at his bushy tail. Oh my friends, isn't he beautiful? Look at this gorgeous snake in my backyard. Oh, so nice to have a visit from him. I'm gonna have to go and check my book and find out exactly what kind of snake he is. But he's about three and a half feet long. Isn't he amazing? Let me go up nice and close so you can see. It goes in and out of the shadows. Look at that. See his little tongue come out? Oh my goodness. Look at that. All the way back to his tail. Wow. He's so cool. Oh my goodness, look at that snake. He's long. Look, his tail goes way back there. This is the second snake we found in our yard today. And this one is almost all black. Oh, there he goes. And this one is about five feet long. Can you believe it? And it's as thick around as my arm. Holy mackerel. Well, that's at the end of our walk looking for animal signs. Thanks for being a nature detective for, with me. Let's go back inside and finish up our story time. Come on, friends. Oh, boy, that was really fun, friends. We got a chance to walk all around through the woods and down by the river. We saw so many signs of animals. That was exciting. Maybe you'll get a chance to take a walk in your, around your house, maybe around your neighborhood, maybe in a nearby park, and see what signs you can spot when you're a nature explorer. Now, I thought it might be fun if we sang a little song about some of those animal signs that we spotted. And I've taken a song that you know, Old MacDonald, which talks about farm animals. And I've changed the words just a little bit so that it's about me living in the forest. And I think you're going to catch on really fast. You can sing. The one part I know you'll be able to sing is Fee Fi Fiddle I O. Can you sing that? Fee fi fiddle I o. Good job. So you join in with me as you catch on to the words, okay? And we're going to listen for some clues from some percussion instruments that we're going to hear. And they're going to give us hints about which animal is coming. So let's see. Old Miss Kelly lived in the forest, feet by Philio. And in that forest there was a bear, feet by Philio. With a growl here and a growl there. Here a growl, there a growl, everywhere a growl. Old Miss Kelly lived in the forest, feet by Philio. Oh, that was fun. 
one. I wonder who else could live in the forest. Luckily, I don't have too many bears right around my house, but there are other animals we saw signs of. I think one's coming soon. Let's listen. such good listeners and helpers. Can you give your brains a kiss? Good job, friends. I can't wait till the next time that we get back together. But in the meantime, maybe you'd like to do some more nature exploring in your, in your backyard. And you might want to check out some really fun online resources with your grown-ups that will teach you some true facts about animals and maybe just some fun, silly story, excuse me, stories too. So stay tuned for some of those resources that you can check out from the library while you're home. So goodbye, friends. See you later. Oh, wait, I can't say goodbye all by myself. Silly me. Somebody else wants to say goodbye too. Come on back up here, Corky, and say goodbye to our friends. Golly, Miss Kelly, you almost forgot about me. I'm sorry, buddy. Now come on up here and sing your goodbye song. Okay. Goodbye, friends. I'm glad we got together. Goodbye, friends. It was fun to sing some songs with you. Goodbye, friends. I'm glad we shared some laughter. Goodbye, friends. It was fun to smile a while with you. See you next time, friends. Goodbye. Okay, my friends, so let's look at some fun resources that you and your grown-ups could borrow from the library's website, library.car.org, library.car.org. We'll start with Hoopla. This is a fun place to borrow books and music and movies. And I want to share a few of the things that I found here about forest animals. Here's our first title, Who Lives Here? Forest Animals. The author is Deborah Hodge and Pat Stevens. And this is part of a series of books in the Who Lives Here series. It's perfect for the littlest forest explorers who want to know all about their friends who live in the woods. The lifelike illustrations and appealing language help children learn lots of cool facts. Bear Cubs, written by Anne Wendorf, is part of the Watch Animals Grow series. This nonfiction book follows adorable bear cubs from their birth in the den through their forest adventures. Learn how bears find food and learn to climb trees. Blackberry Banquet by Terry Pierce. 
Did you ever wonder what sounds forest animals make when they feast on the juicy berries in a wild berry patch? Check out this fun story about what happens when a bear decides to join in the fun. You can squeak and chomp and tweet along with them if you're not laughing too hard. Bear Wants More by Karma Wilson. We all love these wonderful read aloud picture books about Bear and his friends. In this one, spring has arrived and Bear has just awakened from hibernation with a very empty belly. Join him and his familiar forest friends as this great read aloud story comes to life in a video. The animals all bring him lots of tasty treats, but say it with me, Bear wants more. Let's shift gears a little bit and go to another resource on our website called Canopy. When you go to the Canopy website, you can click on Canopy Kids and find the story of Mother Bruce, written by Ryan T. Higgins. Bruce the bear is a terrible grouch. He doesn't like anything except eggs. You'll laugh out loud when you see what happens the day Bruce gets a big surprise. The eggs he planned to eat for lunch hatch into goslings instead, and those baby geese are convinced that Bruce is their mama. They follow him everywhere and drive Mother Bruce crazy. There's one more place on our website you might like to check out, Tumble Books. And this is a fun place for books to come alive and also for some videos. And I wanted to highlight a video simply entitled Raccoons. Raccoons are so clever and they can learn to live just about anywhere. They love the forest, but are right at home in neighborhoods and cities too. Watch these cute animals exploring their world. And then, separate from the library's website, I mentioned during the story time two resources that the library also has for you. In the outreach department, we have a Pinterest page. So if you go to Pinterest.com or on your mobile device, if you use the Pinterest app, you can find many more ideas to keep the learning and fun going at home. Just search for library ccpl backslash outreach backslash forest dash animals. And you'll find the board where I've collected lots of fun activities about forest friends. Another resource you may not have checked out yet is the library's YouTube page at youtube.com. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more fun videos including tips to make your own finger puppet theaters. Just search for library, CCPL, kids and families. You'll also find some of our other story time videos that have been shared on Facebook before and some puppet show videos too, so we'll see you there.